Hi everyone, so today um, I'm going to be painting this fabulous French chateau and the thing that really attracted me to this scene is that fabulous reflection underneath the building. I mean the building is um, pretty pretty amazing in itself but it was the reflection that, that really caught my eye. So um, I've edited down the drawing process. This actually took quite a while, maybe 45 minutes which is quite a long time for me. <clears throat> and I'm being careful to get the proportions right and uh, the verticals vertical and the horizontals horizontal but I'm not putting in every detail. I'm, I'm lightly marking in the little twiddly bits and uh, just some darks for the windows. And for the tree, um, I'm not putting in every branch, but I'm just lightly marking in the main branches and then we'll fill in the foliage afterwards. Just a few details in the background and we're pretty much done. Now for the reflection itself, I didn't want the graphite showing through, so I'm, I'm just going down and putting in dots just to mark where the reflections end. Okay, so onto the sky. I'm using some cerulean here, and just a little bit of permanent rose, just to make it slightly, slightly purpley. And a good, a good mix, and I'm using a big brush. Um, this is an Escoda Aquario, size 14. And you can see this, this it's very fluid paint, and it's falling into a bead, which we're going to be using in just a second. Now this is a, a clean, damp brush, just going across that edge, wetting the paper, and letting that colour just seep down to give a beautiful soft edge for that sky. A little bit more of our cerulean and again a damp clean damp brush has to be clean otherwise you just pull color everywhere and just softening the edges and that really only took about you know a minute or so to do just a little bit of warmth down at the horizon a little bit of um, cadmium orange now my first wash is a mixture of yellow ochre and a little bit of black just to take some of the chroma out and it's just a plain wash over the whole of the building. Um, I'm being slightly careful around the edges, uh, just so that the twiddly bits uh, have some crispness to them. Uh, but the rest of it, I'm just pulling the colour through, not worrying about any of the windows, just putting a layer on. I'm going slightly darker at the bottom, just picking up that bead a little bit, and just making sure it's nice and even, no stripes. And again, just softening that bottom edge with a clean damp brush. This will be going into the water so it won't, it won't, um, it won't show. A little bit of texture with a spray bottle, and just a little bit of splattering with some darker mix. Just add a little bit of interest to the, to the walls. Now the water is, uh, it's a lighter version of the building colour, just with a little cerulean put in and just a plain wash across the whole of the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm working pretty quickly because you don't want the paper to dry and you don't want stripes. Okay, and I actually, when it had dried, it dried far too light, so I'm just going in with a slightly bluer wash. This looks crazy dark here, but it does actually dry back quite lighter. I'm going across nice big brush, lots of water, not going back into the colour too much so it doesn't get stripy. And there we go, that's the first layer. We'll put in the reflections um, on top of that. Now this is this is kind of a tricky bit. This is the castle detail. We want to indicate the roof and the windows and all the architectural details. So I'm, I'm mixing up a, a fairly dark mix of um, ultramarine permanent rose and burnt sienna. And I'm going in, I've got my softening brush handy. I'm just putting little dabs, calligraphic marks with the dark paint where I see the darkest regions. I don't want these things to look pasted on. So I wanna have some soft edges in here. So for that top turrety piece, I'm just putting the paint, and it's still quite wet, it hasn't dried yet, where I see the darkest pieces. And then I come back in with a clean brush, nice pointy clean brush, and I just 
put the verticals in just with water and because the paint is wet it will travel down and create colour and it just provides a little bit of value variation. Similar for the roof, little dabs of dark paint then coming in with a clean damp brush to join in the gaps. And this hasn't got paint on this brush actually, I'm just using the paint that's down there just to mark in some, some of those architectural details. Okay, and then we do move on. Similar across the whole thing, just some calligraphic marks with the dark paint where I see on the reference that it's that's the darkest value. And then come back in, soften the edges, and just let that paint blend out a little bit. It gives a lovely softness to it, but you can still see the lines where the the architectural details are. This takes quite a while. This, this is probably, apart from the drawing, the, the most time-consuming part of this. And you have to do a lot of sitting back and assessing how it looks. Every time you soften, you have to stand back and, and see how it looks. Does it need more softening? Does it need some colour taking up? And I'm varying my my uh, my value here. Is this, this is a lighter wash. The building goes slightly darker at the bottom, so I'm just putting on a, a lighter, just a slightly watered down mix for the bottom of the building. And I think the sort of the the purpley, the purpley hue of this colour provides a nice a nice foil to the the, the warm ochre of the building. Okay. A little bit of roof, again, dabbing in the dark paint, <clears throat> leaving some gaps on the paper. And I've, I've, I'm leading with the point of my brush here, that's why I've got my hand in this sort of ri ridiculous, uncomfortable position, just so I can get the point of the brush where I want my hard edge. And then this is the, this is the clean brush coming in, just joining all the pieces together. So you get some value variation but it's quite soft. Moving down the building, these horizontal lines, I'm leaving gaps. I find that if you put put a very hard line down, it just doesn't it doesn't read convincingly. So I'm leaving little gaps here and there and softening the odd edge down to the windows, which are my nemesis. I hate painting windows. You have to vary them. You can't make them too, too identical. Um, so I'm putting a light wash for the shadow inside and some dabs for the paint, and then coming in with a, a damp brush again and softening the edges. And you can be quite, um, you, you can go to town on this. Um, it's amazing how the human eye can read something as a window, even though you've lost some of the edges of it. Glad those are done. I really don't like doing windows. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have chosen this reference then. <laughs> and down to the bottom, again it's darker down here, so I've got, I, I think I'm, I've probably put some water down so that that uh, top edge of the dark piece just, just blends out a little bit. And I think he's looking okay at this point. I'm quietly confident at this point. Although things, uh, if you a watercolour painter, you know things can go wrong at a moment's notice. Just a little bit. This is a very light wash, just taking down the shadow, the value of the shadow inside the windows there. Okay, now we come onto the trees. Now, I'm putting some water down because I want a nice soft edge before I put the paint on. And I've got a mixture of Hansa yellow, uh, some ultramarine and a little black, and a slightly darker mixture with more, with more black, a little more blue for the bottom. And again, because it's this, the paper's wet, when I put the paint down, it softens immediately. It gives nice soft edges 
taking pretty much the same colour out into the background, so I'm joining all my darks together. I'm not being too uh, particular about about the background. It's not it's not the main focus. And the reflection went in in a single wash, um, a dark ochre colour, and lovely calligraphic marks, so you can show the ripples on the water down at the bottom. The right hand reflection I, I did slightly differently, so I, I wet the paper first and now you can see I'm putting on those calligraphic marks and they're just spreading out softly onto the paper and I think it gives a good effect. A little more dark at the top, just at the waterline. The paper's still wet here so I can afford to put the paint down and just let it seep. Now my original reflection has dried so I'm wetting the paper again. I want to put some more dark on here. It's dark near the waterline. I don't need to soften that edge because the paper's wet. And just a single mark just to show a little bit of the windows in here. Now these look terribly dark when you put them down. It's kind of scary and you think, oh my goodness, this will never work. But they do dry lighter and they do spread out a little. And I think when you see it, yes, it's, I think that gives a good effect. Finishing off the trees, a little bit of water and a slightly lighter mix for the foliage. And I'm using a slightly smaller brush and I'm, I'm, I'm often splaying the bristles and using it almost vertically on the paper just so I can get a nice ragged edge on those on those leaves. I'm trying very hard to join my shapes together. The reference actually has a lot of gaps in that foliage but I find uh, you need to join the shapes together to make it convincing. I often end up with um, trees that look like they've got cotton wool balls on sticks if I don't do this. A little more dark into the bushes just joining things together and putting the branches in and the trunks. I'm, I'm, I'm just indicating here and there. I, again, I don't want it to, to look completely joined up. So my branches have little gaps in them, can indicate where the foliage is, is overlapping. And I, you don't really need very much at all um, for the branches. And again, it's not really the main focus of the painting, so you, you, you don't want to go to town on this too much. I'm also using a rigger. Um, I find a rigger is a, is a great brush to do for branches. It gives some nice crisp marks. I find it much better than a, than a round. So back to the water, there's this beautiful blue-green reflection at the bottom. And again, that's just going on onto, onto dry paper. Keeping the edges choppy to show the ripples. And the rest of it is nice and smooth and even. I think this is a lovely colour. These can be enjoyable to do, but it's quite, um, quite nerve-wracking because you get one chance. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. A little subtlety here, just in the middle, that, that the water's slightly darker. It's a very light wash just to darken that down, just to show how the, the light is, is reflecting differently off, off the water. Now, at this point, um, I'm thinking, ooh, my building is far too light. I think my reflection is the right value, but my building needs to go down, so I'm glazing over it with a, a similar colour as before and it goes down and you think, oh, that looks dark, but it, it does lighten up. Everything else is dry, so it should it shouldn't mess up all your details. And I think you can I think you can agree that, that that works well. And now it's just final details. And using the rigger again just to put in those verticals. And I was, I was pretty happy with it at, at this point. It was a very intense session. It took quite a long time, this one. There's a lot of time in the drawing. Um, 
and uh, I took a lot of breaks. I've edited this down, so uh, it looks a lot, <laughs> a lot brisker than it actually was. Just putting in a few details, just modifying the values a little bit. And here's the final thing. I, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I hope to see you again. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.